I've been using the iPhone 6 for the past two years as my daily driver. So when the time came where performance starts degrading over time, and it seemed to happen a lot sooner with this phone, I sought out to look for a new one. LG's always caught my attention with their dual camera implementation, especially in the V10 where they had dual front cameras. When they released the G5, they switched the cameras to the back, which I thought was a good move for LG. And here we are, two years later after the V10's initial release with the LG G6, which is my new daily driver. So let's just take a look at the LG G6. It's a beautiful phone. With a full glass and metal body design, LG decided to completely ditch the removable battery. What they replaced this with is full IP68 dust and water resistance with the G6, a first for LG. A more in-depth look and you see the volume buttons on the left side as well as the power button on the back. I certainly like the placement of the back button, as I normally kept my finger right here over the Apple logo when I held the iPhone 6. The fingerprint reader is built into the power button on the back of the LG G6 and doesn't actually require being pressed down like the iPhone 6. On the bottom of the phone we see the USB-C charging port as well as a speaker. I do kind of wish that this was a stereo speaker on the bottom as it would have tied into the symmetry of the design. On the top of the phone we see the headphone jack, a must for me and one of the biggest reasons I didn't go with something such as the HTC U11. I personally don't mind the headphone jack here, but it's a little strange getting used to it first having a headphone jack on the bottom of the phone for such a long time. So let's take a look at the screen that LG has prided so much. LG's main claim for the LG G6 was a big screen that can fit into your hand. It has a 5.7 inch 2880 by 1440 screen, and doing the math, this turns out to be an 18 by 9 or 2 by 1 aspect ratio phone, which LG decided to implement into their LG UX Android 7.0 skin. And speaking of the skin, you may notice that some of the menus also have curved corners. And yes, this screen does have curved corners. It's not an overlay set on top of the phone. They are genuinely curved corners, and LG did this for multiple reasons. One, I think it makes the phone look amazing, which was one of their main reasons. But two, it also helps protect the phone against drops, as a 90 degree cornered screen would allow for easier impact. So what can this massive screen do? Well, being a 5.7 inch screen, it's very good for multitasking. And with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, you can have two perfectly square windows side by side. Something that has been generally restricted to the Nexus series. Something that's very useful if you want to watch YouTube while your chatterbox friends are having a party. The screen also supports HDR content, although not much is out there, as well as Dolby Vision content. However, this slightly taller aspect ratio does lead to some weird scaling for apps. If all you care about is the phone's looks, and you don't really care about the internal specs, you can go up to this timestamp where you can hear about the cameras. So inside the LG G6 is the Snapdragon 821 processor. Some people would have liked to see the Snapdragon 835 inside the LG G6, but Samsung took all of those for the S8 and S8 Plus. The phone also has 4 gigs of RAM, as well as 32 gigs internal storage, with expandability for up to 2 terabytes of microSD card storage. Those don't even exist yet. Now on to battery life. The LG G6 has a 3300 milliamp hour battery. It's certainly not the biggest, but it gets me through my day. And I've only completely used it up when I was at an amusement park playing Pokemon Go for 12 hours. The US version of the LG G6 has wireless charging implemented into it and unfortunately, no other model does. The Korean version gets the quad DAC seen on the LG V20, also a wonderful smartphone. However, LG just announced the LG G6 Plus, which comes in two more colors and has both features as well as up to 128 gigs of storage. Being a first time Android user, I was a little upset to see that Android took up seven gigabytes of my storage. So if you do choose to get this phone and you're planning to keep it for a while, I would recommend getting a micro SD card. They're fairly cheap, you can get them pretty much anywhere such as Newegg, Micro Center, but even a 32 gig micro SD card would give you plenty of storage for your smartphone. Also, the micro SD card slot does double as a dual SIM if you're into that and you need two phone numbers or have an international line. So on to cameras, and you're probably asking yourself one of two questions if not both. One, where is the LG G6? Why haven't you shown it off and are only showing off your old iPhone 6? And two, 
How good are the cameras? Well, if you're into video, you'd be happy to know that this entire video up to this point was shot on the LG G6. I'm going to say this, LG, do not get rid of the wide angle camera on your smartphones. I have used this countless times and love the feature. Both cameras have great color reproduction, although they do kind of fall flat in low light, but that's not a big deal to me. Both rear cameras are 13 megapixels, with the first one having an aperture of f1.8, as well as optical image stabilization. However, the 125 degree wide angle camera does not have optical image stabilization. And if you're more of a selfie person, the front camera is 5 megapixels with an aperture of f2.2. Something great that LG includes in the camera app is that they take the top portion of your screen to show a small slideshow of your recent pictures, which is great if you need to access them quickly or you want to take a couple and then find the best shot as fast as possible. So it all dumbs down to my personal opinion and why I chose this phone. As I stated earlier, I really like LG's implementation of the dual camera system, where it can shoot a wide angle picture and get everything in the screen, instead of having a telephoto camera, which I don't really use that often. Also, like every piece of technology, it'll slowly become obsolete in just a span of a few years. This... This took about three months to start getting slow. It has gotten to the point where this battery doesn't give me even two hours of screen on time. Also, I wanted a manageable phone with a big screen. My iPhone 6 here, I used to keep in an OtterBox case which when held is about the same dimensions as the LG G6, while having over an inch bigger of a screen. And a reason I didn't go with something such as the Galaxy S8 is I don't find the curved screen that useful. When I first saw the phone, my first thought was, good luck carrying that without a case. Now I'm not saying that the LG G6 isn't fragile, it's nearly all glass, but the Galaxy S8 has curved edges, which provides a bigger surface area for something to get cracked. Someone I know owned the Galaxy S8 for a week before it completely shattered from dropping. I've chosen to not put a case on the LG G6, but rather just a screen protector, because I really like the look of the G6, and I think something such as a case really ruined the aesthetic. Another reason I didn't go with the Galaxy S8 is due to the complete lack of side bezels. Whoa, 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 hold on a sec. Isn't smaller bezels a good thing? Yes, except for the fact that I don't know how well the palm rejection would work with a curved screen. I've had a little bit of trouble with the small bezels of the LG G6 with my hand wrapping around and touching the screen. With the Galaxy S8, this problem would have been multiplied by many times. Another reason I wanted to go with Android is because I wanted the freedom to choose what I wanted. There are dozens of companies, if not hundreds of companies, that make Android smartphones. And there's only one company that is probably legally allowed to manufacture iOS devices, and that is Apple. I also just got generally frustrated with the iOS interface. There were several things that pissed me off, but one of the biggest ones was this. So when you pre-order something, you put the money down, and then you get it as soon as it's released, correct? So when I went and pre-ordered an album, it told me I pre-ordered the album. Everything seemed fine. Several days later, when it came out, it told me I had insufficient funds. And I don't see how that was possible considering I thought I already paid ahead of time. After talking to Apple support, it turns out I needed more money in my account than what you're paying for. So that's like saying going and getting an ice cream cone for $2 but you need to have $5 in your wallet, otherwise you cannot purchase this ice cream. I found that incredibly stupid and didn't make sense, and this happened to me more than once. And I know that the second time it happened, I know, I know for a fact that I had more than what I was paying for. Another thing is that music that I've purchased has been uninstalled from my phone without me allowing. I remember one time I chose shuffle mode and it switched to a song for a split second and then immediately changed it. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below, tell me what you think about the G6 and what smartphone you're using. I plan on making a subscriber special sometime in the next upcoming months about my setup and everything that went into it. If you're interested in finding out what's in my PC, you can check my Micro Center playlist. It's all up to date and in order. And that's about it. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.